Well, you might have a big fat mortgage and a big fat interest rate to service that mortgage, and I certainly do. But what if we told you that the money the bank lent you doesn't actually exist? It doesn't actually exist. You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Out of thin air. Sounds crazy. Watch this story by Heather to Plessy Allen. <laughs> People are becoming more and more indebted. Paying the price that they can't afford simply to have a, a home. It was like a light went out. The banks created money out of thin air. Out of thin air. Out of thin air. Just in case you didn't get that, here it is again. The problem with money is that it's created by private overseas owned banks out of thin air, out of thin air, out of thin air, and then lent to you and I at compounding interest. Created not really like this, more like this. But ultimately, these numbers do represent this, the hard stuff. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking banks don't print money. The government prints the money. Or maybe the Reserve Bank prints the money. Well, that's what I thought too, but it turns out that we are all Rock. The banks create the loan out of nothing, out of nothing, and then give you the money that they don't have. Don Richards and Sue Hamill, a normal Wellington couple who want that sort of lending to stop. But before we go then, let's get our heads around how this works. You're paying interest on a loan that's been conjured up out of thin air. Let's pretend for a moment that I'm the bank and you want to buy a house that costs $500,000. So you'll need to give me... $50,000 as a deposit. Okay, so there's my deposit. So I need $450,000 from you. That's right. So where am I going to get the money from? I just go into... Because you obviously don't have it. No. That's okay. right. I just go into the computer, type in 450, hit enter. There's your money. There's $450,000. You've just made $450,000 out of absolutely nowhere. That's right. That's that I now have to pay interest on. That's right. Money that you don't have, never have had. That's right. And this, through through home loans, this is how money is introduced into the system. Yes, that's right. But it feels a bit like a trick. Well, it is, really. We check the figures. Last year, this much new money appeared in the country. It's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. It's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. Did you just call yeah. banks a big Ponzi scheme? I said it's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. You're probably thinking there must be more to it. No, this is an international monetary fund document that backs up what we've just told you. See this? Banks are almost fully in control of the money creation process. If you want to read this for yourself, you can find it on our website. Still unconvinced? No, this is, uh, you know, this is what you learn in first-year economics at university. Um, you know, this is how banks work, and there is no sort of great mystery to it. Shama Bil Yakup, economist. Quite surprised that we are, well, surprised. If you have faith that the money is there. Out of thin air. If you have faith that the money is there. It's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. If you have faith that the money is there, then it all works. And that's what our system works on. It's based on faith. It's based on faith that the institutions, the banks, the system that's in place, the rules and regulation protects us and that we won't go bankrupt and we will have our obligations paid. It's almost like a big Ponzi scheme. It's based on faith. Exactly. So why should you care? Well, some say because banks can just keep producing money, it'll just keep driving up the price of our houses. And if we lose faith, you could lose all your money in the bank. The chairman of the UK Financial Services Authority came out at the end of last year and said the primary cause of the financial crisis was the fact the authorities had not restrained the ability of the private banks to issue and create the money supply. Are you advocating that governments print money? Absolutely, but in limited quantities. Former London banker Raf Manji, former colleague of John Key, he thinks the government should print the money and use it to pay for Christchurch's rebuild. The thing about the government is that they can issue the money supply interest-free. 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 So, for example, for an infrastructure project that needs, needs, say, a billion dollars, the government can actually issue that directly into circulation. There's no interest charge. If the banks issued that into circulation, it would come with interest. But what's wrong with the way that we do things now? There's no control. There's no control. There's no control. 
That's the problem. Um, and the problem is also, why should we be paying interest to fund public infrastructure projects when we don't need to? Or all that interest on your mortgage, say Don and Sue. They still owe $140,000 on their house and don't think that much debt is fair. When I looked at uh, the future for my daughters, I've got two young girls who just come out of uh, university. They are saddled with a student loan. They have to save for their retirement. But they also want to buy a house. So they're going to be in debt all their lives. And that's not the future I want to leave for my children. Now, we could have had any number of economists in to discuss the yin and the yang of what we've just seen, but we'd rather know what you think, frankly. All right, look, a couple of points here. First of all, uh, the government lending money interest free. That's never going to happen because what else does the government do for us for free? Nothing. So forget that. That's mm -hmm. not going to happen. As far as the interest rates on the banks go, now, if we're having a bit of a scan around, obviously it's going to vary with depending on which bank you go to and the term you get it over. But, you know, 5-ish percent to 65 6.7% 6 is what the rates they're lending at are. The OCR, which is the basis of what these guys operate from, has been 2.5% for nearly two years. It's two mess. years in March. Gap between and people are going, oh, no, that's not down. what it's all about, but it's a big part of it. That's their starting point. So if you're wondering why you know, the interest rates are so high, you have to say, doesn't the government need to intervene and get these banks to get a bit more realistic with their profit margin? But the bottom line is people saying, look, it's a Ponzi scheme, it's going to tumble down. No, it's not, because New Zealanders are hardwired, and most people are hardwired, to have a house. To have a house, you've got to have a mortgage. It's not going to tumble down. There's nothing to believe in. We want a roof over our head. We want bricks and mortar. It's going to work. A Ponzi scheme just depends on faith. This doesn't. It depends on people wanting to have a house. We all do. Simple. Keen to know whether you're OK with it, though Don and Sue plainly are not. Um, they're running a campaign similar to ones in the UK and the US at the moment, um, f calling for a complete overhaul of the New Zealand financial system. Ha, sounds so easy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. If you want to know more about their campaign, their website is on your screen now. And guys, an interesting uh, reaction on Facebook to this today. Most people weren't aware that this was the case, but feel quite helpless to do anything about it. There's that sort of lethargy or that hopelessness. And uh, one interesting comment from uh, Josh Barr came in on Facebook, and Josh said that, well, leverage played a really large part in the global financial crisis, so it's definitely something to be mindful of, something that we should be doing something about. By the way, in your profile pic, Josh, it looks like your girlfriend's got a bit of leverage on your face. But thanks for contributing, and it's always welcome, Facebook or Twitter.